So uh, this video is based on uh, international trade and it's looking at the JCAF and it's a, it's a full-on video from the Marshall Learner Condition. And again, it relates to a current account deficit and an expenditure switching policy of devaluation and the impact it can have on a, a current account deficit. So clearly when you've got a current account deficit, as we can see here, um, the policy or different policies could be used. And if there were to use devaluation, then it looks at, well, will it instantly improve the current account deficit or do we have to consider other factors? Now, with regards to the Marshall Lerner condition, that obviously was all about price elasticity of demand. And it looked at if your price elasticity of demands of your imports and your exports are greater than one, then obviously um, that, that elasticity will mean that it should work and the devaluation should be successful. Now, the JKF takes that one step further and it looks at time. And what they argue is, actually, if you're thinking about a devaluation on the current account deficit to begin with, um, in the short term, the price elasticity of demand will actually be negative and it will be inelastic. And they believe that for many reasons, and we'll delve into that, but they, they, they believe that in the short term, because it's inelastic, it'll actually worsen the current account deficit. And then over time, it'll become more elastic and then it'll start to improve the current account deficit and hopefully get it into a surplus. Now, some of the reasons why um, the JCAF believed that in the short term it was inelastic was, well, first of all, think about it from the point of view of um, contracts. So let's imagine, again, we've got our uh, weak pound, imports dearer, exports cheaper, because the devaluation will weaken that currency. And let's, let's pretend we're talking about the pound. Okay, so if imports are dearer, then that means that we surely will not want to be buying from abroad. But what happens if we're locked into contracts from suppliers abroad and we're still having to buy those, um, those goods from abroad because of the agreement we have from those suppliers? Now, UK firms will have to pay more for those supplies because of that locked agreement. They, they've agreed in a price, but as that price is getting paid, the exchange rate is going to obviously influence that price and the cost will be higher now for UK firms having to import. So that will obviously worsen the valuation of those imports. Exports will be cheaper, but at the same time, those foreign produce, those foreign customers that might buy UK exports, they might be locked into their own contracts with maybe their domestic suppliers or suppliers from in other countries. And they might not be able to suddenly switch to UK firms and buy UK supplies, not quite yet anyway. So for number one, it could be to do with contractual agreements and they might have to wait for those contracts to expire before they can then buy from the UK or UK firms buy domestically. Number two, uh, do firms have the information instantly? And I'm not talking about the exchange rates, and I'm not talking about the news of devaluation. What I'm saying is, if you're going to change your suppliers, um, you're going to have to consider, well, the logistics and how you're going to all of a sudden change the supply chain and change the distribution of the goods. So again, for example, if you're a, if, if you're a, a, a foreign company looking to buy UK goods because exports are now cheaper from the UK, that's absolutely great. But logistically, is it possible? How are you going to do it? If you're if you're already buying goods from another country and then you're going to, and you've got all the logistics in place, everything's there, the distribution networks, everything's um, in place already, and then all of a sudden you're thinking, okay, I'm not going to buy from that country anymore because I can get a, a better deal from the UK. Well, yeah, that's fine, but then you have to get all the information in terms of the supply, in terms of the logistics, and getting those goods from the UK to your country. And that might take a little bit of time. Also, if you've been importing goods from other countries and now it's more expensive, it's dearer, then you'll have to be in a position where you know that you can buy it domestically and that there are domestic substitutes that you can buy from. And again, it might, it might require a little bit of research. So that's another reason why it might be inelastic in the first place. And number three, now, are there actually alternative domestic substitutes? I mean, you have to remember, one of the reasons for a current account deficit is the lack of competitiveness internationally. And if we're import-reliant, which the UK is, and the UK's import a lot of goods from overseas, just because you make imports dearer doesn't necessarily mean that these UK firms will stop buying from abroad, especially if we haven't got the infrastructure, 
we haven't got the um, the actual companies and the industries in the UK to suddenly start supplying. That will take time. So if you're in a situation where imports are now more expensive, but you cannot buy them from the UK because there are no producers within the UK, then obviously you're going to continue to buy from uh, from abroad, but it's going to be more expensive. And therefore that again is going to worsen the, uh, the current account deficit. Now, over time, those issues, hopefully they'll be corrected. So obviously, number one, contracts expire. So that should be absolutely fine. And you, you can search for new contracts and hopefully new contracts relate to the UK. Um, number two, obviously, over time, you acquire information. And because you acquire that information, you can act on that information. And again, that should help. And, and number three, um, if you know that you're following a policy of devaluation, then you would probably argue it's common sense to then uh, act on it and, and carry out the investment that is required to boost um, the sectors that are needed to facilitate this new demand, which would be domestic. So that would require investment in infrastructure. It might require investment in, um, in terms of training and education to educate those employees towards that skilled new sector. It might be in terms of the investment in capital goods that might be required. All of that, it can be done over a time period. And once you've got that in place, then you've got UK producers. And once you've got UK producers, then you've got the substitutes that you can buy from and you are not dependent from overseas anymore. And the whole argument, again, as I've said there, um, all of these factors then should, it should lead to a current account surplus.